first thought of Azul as a guy who tries to not play the deck everybody else is playing because sure. he hates playing the mirror. Uh, um, is, is, is the deck just that good? I think it is. You know, Azul is one of those guys who's always played the deck that he thinks is the best for the tournament, and it seems like he deemed Zoark Eggs to be the best deck to start things off here in this tournament. And it looks like we are getting the game oh, started. Oh, we're playing Pokemon. Yes, Alex is going to be going first. It looks like does start that roadblock Sudowoodo in the active position. Of course, that roadblock ability, uh, each play, or your opponent can only have up to four benched Pokemon. Very good against Zoark, which requires lots of benched Pokemon to do damage. Alex has a really solid turn going here, though, with a Ultra Ball going to be able to find him a Tapu Lele to get any supporter out of his deck. And it he's, looks he's like... He's checking his prizes. So, so are there key prizes you're trying to look for in the mirror match? Yeah, you definitely want to make sure you have your Hex Maniacs. Alex has already got one in the discard pile, so we'll be able to have access to it with... Uh, via Seeker later on. You, you want to check to make sure your Zoark line is there. You, do you have all four Zoark uh, GX and all four Zeruas? Do you have your Executes? You know, those are the main things I would say. Double Colorless Energy is also a super important resource that these guys are going to want to have access to. And we actually, seeing, uh, we have Alex's list here in front of us. He actually has a lot of really interesting techs. We see uh, a Enhanced Hammer in his list. We see a Counter Catcher. All of those things could be huge. And it looks like Alex is going to be going for a turn one get here potentially this could be detrimental to Azul's setup so this is an interesting decision I mean he discarded the hex to go grab a Getsis oh, how do you feel about Getsis versus hex turn oh one it looks in this pretty match? good here he's gonna oy, get oy, oy. four cards on Azul's hand and Azul's gonna be left with a black white foul play Zoark and a hex maniac only cards in his hand. And I think Alex's decision there to go for the Getsis as opposed to Hex was kind of based on Azul's start, right? Azul has a Tapu Lele GX in the active position, so that's one less ability-based Pokemon that he'd be able to shut down with that Hex Maniac supporter. Getsis was able to draw him four cards, but we still don't see a Zerua yet. We'll see if he has one in his hand. Definitely want to get a Zerua down on the bench, and I'm not sure that he has it yet. <laughs> he's got a couple of puzzle of times. Oh, looks like he's going to use that he's to get grab an Ultra, that Ball. Ultra Ball back. You know, you don't really like using Puzzle of Time this early, but as, uh, Alex really is just wanting to get a Zerua in play here, right? Because that's the only way he's going to be able to, like, attack on the next turn is if he has Zerua out, so... Or Zoark in play. So he's going to go ahead and Ultra Ball, get rid of that Field Blower, which he also just got back with the Puzzle of Times, and looks like a Skyfield hits the discard pile as well. Is getting a Skyfield out early important? I guess in the big scheme of things, not that important because you know it's coming out before anybody takes a knockout. Right? Yeah, I think at this point Alex knows, you know, Azul's deck. He's seen his hand. He sees the, the foul play Zoark. So he's assuming it's a Zoark mirror match. Skyfield's going to hit the field at some point, and it's usually going to be there to stay. Sure, it could get field blowered at some point along the way, um, but it's definitely not something you need to prioritize getting out. Right. So Alex is going to go ahead and just pass things over to Azul. What is his top deck? It doesn't look like it's anything playable. Ooh, just a Hex Maniac from Azul. And a pass. Nothing going on in Azul's yeah. hand. That gets us was so strong from Alex. That was crazy, uh, it gets. I mean, uh, obviously, pulling the double pulses off the gets us is something that makes you say, like, well, that's not what I wanted to see right away. But he's basically not punished for it because he hits Azul so hard. And as Alex is just really going to get a solid lock going here. He's going to go ahead and be a Seeker for Hex Maniac. He knows Azul doesn't really have anything playable in his hand. Hex Maniac is going to yeah. take away any of his top deck options, potentially of like a Shaman EX or an Ultra Ball. All of those which would be live cards are no longer live cards because of Hex Maniac, which is going to turn off abilities. So it looks like we're going to just see a Riotus beating for 90 damage. If Azul doesn't top deck a basic Pokemon here... That is going to be the game. Yes, that is it. Alex Ooh, Wilson boy. wins a fast game number one. Gets to sing Azul out of the game on the very first turn. Oh, it looks like that Bridget was prized on Alex's side. Maybe he would have gone for a Bridget. It was in his prize cards, though, it looks like. And the Getsis, maybe not what he wanted to go for, ideally, but it paid off and it won him game number one. Yeah, boy, how do you feel about the expanded <laughs> format? <laughs> that wasn't toxic, was yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> very, very fast first game. Gets this is a extremely powerful supporter card, as we see there on the screen. It's just, you know, provides opportunities for you to just lock your opponent out of the game very, very quickly. And we saw that be the case here in round number one, in game number one of uh, the Roanoke TCG Regionals. That was the... Uh...
Um, not a lot of fun to watch. No, no. But, but uh, I think a fascinating demonstration of the craziness of Expanded. Absolutely. Yeah, so many cards in the Expanded format. We have 31 sets legal for this tournament. That is a crazy amount of sets. We've got cards dating all the way back to Black White Base set, which came out over seven years ago. So, so many, the, the card pool is just humongous. We see so many different combos come out that we just don't really see in Standard. Um, but some good news for Azul here heading into this game, too. He's going to get to go first, which means he's not going to get gets this out of the game again. Yeah, well, it's interesting because obviously, I mean, if, if he had had any sort of supporter at all, I mean, his board state, I mean, the four cards he drew off that gets us were not super great. He ends up double puzzling turn one. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he could easily have been run off the board because he had yeah. garbage. Absolutely. But, uh, uh, the fact that he gets us as Azul and realizes Azul is, has absolutely nothing. Yeah. He's able to be okay with the fact that he's slow rolling. Yeah. And, uh, uh, pick up the easy win. Looks like we're going to see a mulligan over on Alex's side. He's going to shuffle his hand back into his deck. You do have to have a basic Pokemon to get started in the Pokemon trading card game, so got to shuffle his hand in, sh uh, draw a new seven, and try to find another basic. And Azul, because of the mulligan, will gain one additional card to start the second game. Yeah, now now in that mulligan, I thought one of the interesting things that, that, that you see there is Alex flashed the Hypnotoxic Laser. Mm, yes. The Hypnotoxic Laser is the spice. Yes, it's it, super chip. spicy. So who... Uh, um, I, I know you were, you talked about this in your Someone's PC article. Yes. You're all about the Hypnotoxic Laser. <laughs> Talk a little about that because I, I recognize that's a difference between Azul's list and Alex's list. Yeah, so the reasoning for Hypnotoxic Laser in these Zoark decks is with Mewtwo EX. You know, Buzzwool coming into this weekend is expected to be extremely popular. So Mewtwo EX lets you hit for weakness against a Buzzwool. If you have one energy on your Mewtwo, or excuse me, if you have one double color synergy on your Mewtwo and Buzzwell has one energy and you have a choice band, you're hitting for 180 after weakness. That's 10 short of a knockout on a Buzzwell GX. Hypnotoxic Laser, with the poison damage between turns, gets to that 190 number and lets you take that knockout. So that's the reasoning for the Hypnotoxic Laser in these Zoark decks. And it can also just be randomly useful, right? right Sometimes right. you can play around something like a Focus Sash if your opponent, you know, if you go up against like a Lucario deck or a Golade deck that plays Focus Sash, which we saw both of those decks in top eight of Salt Lake City regionals. Um, so there's, there's definitely multiple uses to it. Um, but Azul's going to get things going here on his turn. Does start Execute, which with Alex starting the Mewtwo, all Alex is going to need is a double Colas energy, and he'll be able to take a prize here right away on this, his first turn. Uh, but Azul's going to get a Battle Compressor and discard a few cards. Yeah. Definitely going to see those Executes hit the discard yeah. pile. Potentially a Supporter as well. Depends on what he has in his hand, yep. though. We definitely need the Hand Cam because, you know, uh, me not being a half the Pokemon player you are, I have a hard time identifying <laughs> the cards from that, like, half flash of the uh, a card. Yeah, it looks like he's going to go ahead and choose to get rid of a Colrus. Definitely something he'll be able to use later on with BS Seeker, potentially. And Tapu Lele's Wonder Tag going to come out. Uh, looks like he'll probably be eyeing up that Bridget on turn one. Both of these players actually opting to only play one copy of Bridget. We've seen Zoark decks throughout the season play, you know, heavier copies. You know, in the standard format, Zoark decks play three copies of this card most of the time. But here in Expanded, these guys are opting to just play um, just play the one copy, and I think the reasoning for that is just, you know, you have so many other potential good turn one supporter I options, I mean, I think right? just like game one, yeah. I mean, if you're Bridget's prized, you're like, well, I could Hex or Gets us this turn, Absolutely. and those are all awesome plays, too. Yeah. I mean, the, the turn one plays, it, it's just, uh, I mean, you love to develop your board, but you don't feel wed to it, right? Yeah, and it's funny, too, because I'm pretty sure if Alex had access to his Bridget, he probably would have played a Bridget on turn one as opposed to Gets us, right. valuing his setup. But no, he gets this, and it actually ended up working out pretty well for him. Oh, yeah. So Azul does get that turn one Bridget. Going to bench two Zeruas, as well as that roadblock pseudo Wudo, which is going to be so important here in this mirror match. We'll see uh, what else he has in his hand. Maybe not much else. Going to just pass it over to Alex, and he's going to get his turn started. Looks like we do see that Tapu Lele GX at the front of his hand. He can find a supporter out of his deck. We'll see yeah, so, so is his strategy here to bridge it as well, given that the pseudo Wudo's already hit the board? Or, or would you go down a different path? Um, you know, I think it really kind of depends on the rest of his hand. I think Bridget is fine if you have, like, a follow-up supporter, maybe. No, actually going to choose to computer search here. Going to get rid of an N and a Tapu Lele. And maybe this will find the Bridget as opposed to using Tapu Lele for Bridget. Because if you use Tapu Lele he's got for the Bridget... Bench spots, right? Exactly. I re that's, I recognize, playing down the Tapu Lele. Because yep. I, I think everybody saw him flash the Tapu Lele in hand. He assumed he was going to wonder tag for Bridget, but he'd only get two spots there. 
Yeah. So computer search an A spec card. You can only play one A spec card in your deck, and most players tend to choose computer search just for the sheer consistency of it. Discard two cards and search your deck for any one card is a pretty powerful effect, and it's going to pay off here for Alex. We'll see what what is the one card he's going to value getting here. Eyeing up a Zerua potentially. Uh, it kind of depends on what the rest of his hand looks like. I see a Zoark, I think, and a VS Seeker. But not sure. So it's what interesting. Else he has. If, yeah, if he if he doesn't grab a supporter off of this, do you think that that he's gonna be following a slightly different supporter strategy? Wow. Yeah, he may already have one in his hand, actually. I mean, blowing a resource as powerful as computer search for what's essentially like a, an ultra ball. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe he ends. was wanting to get a Bridget there with that computer search, and it may have been prized once again. Um, you know, that would probably be a little better than just waiting on the end. Or, and waiting to end like on the next turn maybe, but maybe right. Alex here is wanting to dig for that double colorless energy to get the knockout here on turn one. Right. Like execute on, in Azul's right. starting side. It only has 30 HP. X ball does 20 damage times the amount of energy attached. So if Alex finds a double colorless energy here, he'll be able to take this KO and take the first prize of this game number two. Uh, I recognize this is the downside of me being an old man and uh, not being able to uh, uh, see people's hands super well. Hopefully I'll get better at it over the course of the stream, <laughs> but... Uh, um, yeah, I feel like he could have computer searched for the DCE and then played in and yeah. got the same outcome. Now, maybe, as you said, he was looking for a bridge in the bridge's prize, and he was like, okay, new strategy. Yeah, and I think he definitely wants to get multiple Zerua in play, right? Azul went first. There's always the chance that Azul just has Guzma DCE plus a Zoar GX, and he can knock out Alex's only Zerua in play, right? And then that just takes away all of Alex's options on the next turn of getting a Zoark out. So you just really want to have multiple Zoarks in play, or multiple Zeruas in play so that you can have multiple Zoarks later down the road. Right. We'll see Pokemon Communication come out, actually a card that we get access to here in the expanded format that we don't have in standard. Let's you take a Pokemon from your hand, put it on the top of your deck, show it to your opponent, put it on top of the deck, and then you search your deck for another Pokemon and put that one in your hand. So Alex going to use that, find the Pseudo Wudo, gets that on the bench, going to limit Azul's bench as well, so Azul's bench will not be able to have that fifth spot. And it looks like he has the double puzzle in his hand once again. Oh so my god. Two it's, games in a row. His turn one double puzzle action. <laughs> I, I'm sure he has mixed feelings about the fact. Yeah, he's like, I just can't bring myself to... Uh... To, to do it. Yeah, he's... Uh, oh, he oh no, he's like, he's like, yeah, we're going after that. Here it comes. So, you know, he could double puzzle here. He can get computer search and the N. Hold the N for next turn, and then computer search away the other two cards in his hand. Uh, actually, gonna I think he had another N in his hand, so he's still got another supporter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is going to find him uh, probably that double color synergy if he's really valuing this knockout here on the execute. Uh, yeah, the computer search for the DC is, uh, I mean, computer search, I think one of the miracles and expanded of computer search is it's the fifth out to the DC yeah, absolutely. game after game. I mean, that's how decks like uh, Seismitoad, where, you know, where people were first playing, saying, like, I'm just going to play four DCs and yep. nothing else. Yep. You know, we're able to be consistent enough to get Quaking Punch uh, turn one game after game after game. Yeah. So Azul is going to go ahead and promote a Tapu Lele after having his Execute knocked out. He does have a fresh hand of six because of Alex's end. Going to have seven now after his draw for turn. Computer Search going to get rid of a Guzma and that foul play Zoark. Going to find any one card out of his deck and uh, put that in his hand. And uh, maybe finding a supporter here kind of depends on what the rest of his hand looks like. You know, He can attach to Tapu Lele and energy drive this. Mewtwo this turn if he wants to. It's it's kind of hard to get a knockout here for Azul. Um, he would have needed a Hex Maniac plus like multiple Zoarks and yeah, it ju it just wasn't going to happen. So that's why I think we saw him send up this Tapu Lele in the active spot. And we see that chorus that he discarded on that first turn being really crucial here. Of course, going to let him shuffle into his deck and then draw a number of cards equal to the number of total benched Pokemon. And there's seven in play, so he'll shuffle, draw seven. Not too bad. So I recognize a lot of the texts that Alex has in, in his deck are texts really to deal with uh, uh, things like Buzzwell, like throwing in the lasers and throwing in the Mewtwo EX. Um, Azul's got an interesting tech as well. He's playing the, uh, the, the BKT Zoroark, which mm -hmm. Alex is not playing. Yeah. How big is that this mirror match? It's very important in this mirror match, especially if you're ever playing from behind at any point in the game. It's very easy to come take a... You know, as a one prizer to take a knockout on a Zoark GX after you've been Hex Maniac, right? So that's that's the strategy a lot of times in these mirror matches is just using Hex Maniac multiple times until you know you are able to lock your opponent out of the game. Zoark BKT can take a knockout without having to use trade to draw into a bunch of basic Pokemon and stuff like that. So. 
So, so, you know, I think part of what's interesting here is uh, a lot of people made their deck decisions assuming Buzzwall was going to be such a big part of the meta. Absolutely. Do you get a sense that, that this is representative of the meta? Is Are, are, are more people going to be playing Zoro Eggs versus Buzzwall? You know, it's interesting. I think we will probably see more um, Zoark than probably anticipated previously coming into the tournament. The deck is still just so good, right? Like, right. The, the combination of trade with executes, the being able to, you know, use Hex Maniac multiple times in a game in a row. Uh, and Riot is beating is just such a powerful attack, able to do so much da damage because of that Skyfield Stadium in the expanded format. So we're going to see a couple of trades from Azul. Um, I think that we'll probably see a lot of Zork throughout the weekend, but I am uh, very confident there will be lots of Buzzwool as well around this tournament. So double puzzle as well from Azul. Both these players having those early game double puzzles yeah, coming exactly. out. Going to get a computer search in VS Seeker. Can reuse that computer search. You know, we just see the power of propagation right now. Being able to use those propagations, yep. put two eggs back in his hand, and just using computer search for free here, basically, is so, so strong. Uh, you know, uh, eggs, should they be banned? I mean... You want to talk about a broken card. Look, he's going crazy here. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a very powerful card. You know, I don't think that Zoark or Execute was never designed with Zoark GX in mind, right? Like, they never knew that this card was going to come seven years down the road or whatever it is at this point. Um, I'm not sure that it necessarily should be banned, but it's obviously just an extremely powerful combo. So we see the DCE coming down on Azul's side. He's going to use Energy Drive. Even though Tapu Lele is a Psychic type, it does not hit for weakness or resistance, so it's going to do a, a solid 80 damage, and this is going to set up for a knockout on Azul's next turn, and Alex is going to get things going with a Battle Compressor. So this is an interesting part of, uh, um, I feel like, card design with Tapu Lele. The fact that they made it neither weak to anything, nor could it hit for weakness or resistance, and a keeps key, uh, prevented the Mewtwo Wars that were yeah. such a big issue, frankly, right before my kids started playing. Um, I, uh, I've been telling people I feel like one of the interesting things about Zoroark GX is because it has a weakness and can hit for weakness, it's another kind of consistency card that's warped the meta in some way. Absolutely. Because, yeah. uh, uh, I mean, you have to kind of make decisions based on that. Whereas Tapu Lele, nobody makes decisions based on that because it kind of is, it is what it is. Right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, Tapu Lele. It's, it, you know, they decided whenever they printed all of the uh, Guardian Pokemon, the Tapus, they gave them all no weakness and resistance, but also had the foresight to make Tapu Lele's energy drive specifically say it doesn't hit for weakness or resistance, right? right? right. So, yeah, I, mean, uh, if, I think if, they wanted uh, to avoid the Mewtwo Wars of 20, exactly. uh, 2012 or whatever it was, whatever that card came out. If they could hit out. Psychic Types for weakness, like you, yeah. Psychic Types would be unplayable. It'd be very, very good. It would be very hard to play Buzzwool GX in a meta where everything plays Tapu Lele and it hits Buzzwool for weakness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would, it would ruin, the, uh, ruin the game. Sure. So we're going to see Alex. He's going to use that Chorus, draws himself seven cards, does find one Zoark GX, can trade this turn. He has those executes in his discard pile. Looks like he has a Mr. Mime. He has a puzzle as well in his hand, kind of flashing that around. Going to go ahead and trade once more. We'll see what he wants to do. If he can find another double colorless energy, he may want to retreat and try to avoid letting his Mewtwo just get knocked out. We're actually going to see him use those propagations. Azul's actually, as, <laughs> as he's looking through the discard pile, going to set them out for Alex. And uh, right. Alex is going to use Ultra Ball. Finds himself another Zoark GX. Going to use Propagation once again. Looks like another, another Ultra, Ultra Ball coming Ball. out. Maybe finding a Shaman EX here. No, actually going to go ahead and just get another Zerua, wanting to get multiple Zoarks set up for later on in the game. So how important is conserving your basics? Like we saw Alex has a Mr. Mime in hand, and Mr. Mime is not going to play an important role in this game because there's nothing that hits the bench for weakness. Yep. But I recognize there's a lot of times when you're like, Hex, fill your bench, and the Hex turns off, and you've got to go back to four Pokemon. Um, how do you think about whether or not you want to be thinning your deck and getting rid of uh, cards versus holding on to cards? So you have to kind of analyze, like... Okay, my opponent's playing Sudowoodo. I'm going to need to find basics later on in the game. I'm also playing against the Zoark Mirror Match, and if my opponent is using Hex Maniac, I'm not able to use my trades to find my basic Pokemon. I'm not able to use Propagation to get those eggs back from the discard pile. So I'm going to need to keep some basic Pokemon around and have access to them. We actually see that laser coming in here, and actually right. could take some effect. Does flip tails on the sleep, unfortunately, for Alex. But uh, he does have the Enhanced Hammer in his hand as well. He can play it and limit Azul's damage, but at the same time he'll limit his own damage because both of these attacks are based on the amount of damage, uh, the, the amount of energy attached to both actives. But going to go ahead and choose to play it, which I think is smart. He's going to try to protect his Mewtwo on this next turn, forcing Azul to have like a double colorless energy and a choice band. 
So we're just going to see that energy drive for 60, or excuse me, does 40, and then 10 more for the poison between turns. 50 damage on that Tapu Lele in the active. Azul did get red carded last turn, so he's only got five cards in his hand. Does have two Zorak GX set up, though. What is he going to do here? I think we see one of those Pokemon communication in his hand. He's going to go ahead and trade first, though. Maybe not wanting to put that Execute back in the deck. We're going to see communication. Puts a Pokemon on top. Shows it to Alex. Doesn't show it to us, though, so we're not quite sure what that card was he put back on top. But Should be on top. It looks yeah. like... Maybe a Tapu Lele. Yeah, it looked like a Tapu Lele to me, too. He's going to use this to find a Great Zorak GX. I mean, I thought I saw a Mr. Mime in Alex's deck, but it turns out he doesn't run Mr. Mime. Oh, no, he does. Okay, yeah, he that does, was yeah. a Mr. Mime. I think Shoot. he did have it in his hand, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was that bad. <laughs> so the, the madness, the madness. The communication, both of these players running it. We actually see in Azul's list here, he's actually playing two copies of the card. Uh, most of these Zorak decks only playing one. Going to get that... Or did he actually... Oh, he actually chose not to get a Zorak. He actually chose to fail the Pokemon communication. Interesting. Maybe wanting to save that Zerua to be a potential breakthrough Zoark so that he could yeah, stand I think he's in and to get hide a knockout. the spice to uh, to not let him know he's got the BKT until it's too late. Yeah, absolutely. But he wants to always have a Zorua available to uh, uh, evolve in there if uh, Alex plays Hex and goes uh, goes for the big shot. Yeah, having access to Zeruas is going to be huge to make sure he can get that, you know, either Zoark GX in play or the Zoark Breakthrough, whichever one he values more at the time. Looks like we're going to see eight cards on the Colrus here. Going to draw this hand. We'll see if he can maybe find one of his two Floatstones to move this active Tapu Lele. He could get a knockout if he finds a double colorless energy with his own Zoark GX, but then he's kind of making himself susceptible to, you know, a return knockout on Alex's side. But Alex would need a lot of cards it's to pull finished. up. I feel, like, I feel like their board development has been a little slower than I think I expected. Like, we haven't reached that point where people are able to start trying to hex each other, which is a, right. kind of a key part of I think, how these games usually develop in the mirror. Yeah, things have definitely been moving a little slower. We're going to see the double propagate, it looks like. Nope, just one, actually. Let's see. He does have Ultra Balls in his hand. Probably he has a second trade those. left, right? Yeah, I believe yeah. he has only traded once. Oh, but he's, he's throwing away uh, something. Looks like he's going to get rid of a field blower, not oh, right. really thinking that's going to be something that's too, too relevant here. It can be nice maybe to get rid of a float stone later in the game, but not something he's going to need too much. Would rather just thin his deck. And we do see that Zoark Breakthrough come into play with that stand in ability. Let's him move it from the bench to the active once during his turn. And then also Mind Jack does 30 damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon plus 10 base damage. So he's going to be able to take a knockout on this Mewtwo here if he wants to with that stand in. And it looks like that's what he's opting for, actually. Gonna go ahead and maybe propagate once more. I think he does still have another Ultra Ball. He can, of course, I think still trade once more, but maybe he did trade that second time and we just missed it. Gonna go ahead and use Propagations, trying to play around that Hex Maniac of Alex. Oh, actually gonna be just short of the knockout? No, no. no, I, no he's okay. got, he's got yeah, it. I thought so. Yeah. So it looks like the Alex... The fact that Alex was reaching for the dice... <laughs> Stunning turn of events. So Alex should be able to take a knockout this turn on that Zoroark. Yeah. I mean, he only needs one Pokemon to, and a DCE to get there. Much easier to knock out this Zoroark than it is to knock out a Zoroark GX, um, which, is be, which would be good for Alex. But he sees that Azul has a ton of cards in his hand. If he could find another red card this turn, we know he does play two. He's already used one. Um, he could definitely limit that hand size of Azul. And this could be that turn where Alex really comes in and gets ahead in this game by spamming those Hex Maniacs turn after turn. Gonna choose to go ahead and evolve that Zoark, uh, the foul play Zoark, get that in play on the bench. You know, it's not as good as Breakthrough Zoark. Alex doesn't play Breakthrough Zoark in his list, but it's still something that can be good. It can be used to copy a Mind Jack on Azul's side. It can be used to copy Riot's beating from one of his own Zoark GXs. So it still has uses, but uh, definitely not as powerful as the Zoark uh, breakthrough in this so, matchup. So talk to me. I recognize, I think Azul could have got there by putting a DC on the Zoark GX and then saving the Mind Jack for a later one shot in the game. Does that make a difference? How, how do you think Azul thinks about that so decision making? I, in order to make to get that knockout, Azul, I think, actually did have to attack with the Zoroark. He's got the choice he band on the Zoroark. But GX, he needed right? to stand in because he didn't have a way to move oh, the Tapu Lele trade, in the right. active spot. You know, I think he was oh, okay. looking for that float stone, right. didn't find it, unfortunately, and so because of that, had to use stand in. I think in a perfect world, right, Azul would have preferred to save the right. Zoroark, and I think that's what we would have seen him do if he had the option to attack with Zoroark GX, but unfortunately, it just wasn't something I think he had available to him. Right. That's why I'm bad at Pokemon. <laughs> 
So we're going to see a Shaman EX coming into Alex's hand. Can use setup, draw a few cards here. Has already played a supporter for turn, but he will be able to draw. You know, if he can thin his hand, hand down. Size. He's yeah, got to yeah. thin it out. We'll have to thin his hand down. We'll see if he has cards that are playable. I don't see that double colorless energy yet. Going to need that if he wants to take this knockout. Looks like he's going to trade away that gets us for his first trade. No yeah. DCE yet, though. Ooh, there is that red card, though. Yeah, although it looks like he's str he has been able to find an Ultra Ball or something that really lets him discard cards from his hand to make the Shaman more meaningful. Yeah. Looks like we and will just see that red card. Red card's burnable. That's good. Yeah, and it's also unfortunate for Azul because he did just use those propagations to put those eggs back in his hand, and now they're going back into the deck. And you don't want those executes in the deck. You really right. want them in your discard pile to use that propagation ability multiple times per turn to use your trades. Um, and that's just not something that he that he was able to do here. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting aspect of the mirror, right? When you think the hex is coming, you want to grab the eggs. Yeah. But then if he plays a shuffle draw card like an NRA red card on you, it can uh, be a, a pretty hefty penalty. Yeah, so Alex, I think, was kind of trying to see ways he can thin his hand down. He does have Skyfield. That's something he could play. Might not want yeah. to give that option to Azul, though, to potentially get a knockout here. I recognize they've been very slow to uh, to lay down the sky fields here. Mm. Ooh, a single puzzle of time actually comes out. I think he's just burning cards. Yeah, right? maybe I mean, wanting he's to just set up. Desperately trying to get cards out of his hand. He's like, I can do that thing. I'm gonna go ahead and propagate. And then I can decide. Although he propagates instead of burning a card, so yeah, shows I've, how much I know. He found the DCE. That's what he was looking for. Yep, and he will be able to. I think he was maybe trying to not put Shaman in play. Yeah, he's, wanted to use that. He's gonna puzzle. play down the mime. Yeah, and then he holds the Shaman. Yeah. And the next time a bench spot gets free, he can draw more cards. Yeah, absolutely. And playing that puzzle, you know, may seem interesting, but I think he just wanted to try to he look at the top three, and if, like, say a DCE was, like, the third card or something like that, he's able to move it around and draw it off of that second trade. It right. ended up still being in those top two, but, you know, he still was able to draw it afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just, that, just really wanting to ensure nice that to he be able it. to peek at it and say, oh, hey, we have the DCE here. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be great. So we do see the Riotus beating does take the knockout. Azul is going to choose what to promote here. Actually going to send up Pseudo Wudo, so maybe his hand not very strong on his side. Maybe he has a floatstone. Or, or maybe he got the floatstone. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I hope he got the floatstone because we, we're a fan of interactive games here. Absolutely. <laughs> so looks like an Ultra Ball might be his first option here. Going to discard. Looks like that gets us and an Execute. Can find himself a Shaman EX. Could also just find a Tapu Lele GX to get a Supporter card. We'll see which one he wants to opt for, though. trying to look at his hand. I, are you seeing shamans? Uh, I think I may have seen the float stone. I don't know if I saw a shaman or another Yeah, I don't though. think I saw a shaman because I, I assume after getting red carded like that, he would be <clears throat> thinking he'd like to maybe play it on a shaman. Yeah, Although he's got obviously the... it's susceptible to getting killed. Yeah, he does have the, the couple of trades available to him. And this could be a really big turn for Azul, right? This could be the turn where he pops off if he's able to get the Hex Maniac, Skyfield, full bench combo. Uh, and take a knockout on Alex's side, and maybe get like a red card as well to combo with it. I just can't, that could be I extremely can't imagine powerful. he could find all the resources he needs to do that after getting red carded yeah. and playing a hex. I mean, he's only going to be able to look at what uh, eight cards with the two trades. Yeah, it definitely seems I mean, it, it's a you lot have to, to find ask a lot for. of Pokemon. Yeah, it's you do have to find a lot, and you know, since he has to find even more since he had to discard those eggs earlier yeah, on. Exactly. Uh, sh like, excuse me, shuffle them back into the deck. Yeah, the the hex. Floatstone, five Pokemon, DCE mm -hmm. off eight cards seems tough. He's got a few Pokemon, does have the DCE, has the Floatstone as well. So we'll see if he chooses to attach, maybe. Gonna actually just retreat into Execute and pass onto Alex's turn. Wanting to save the DC, doesn't want to just hit into this Zoark for a little bit of damage and potentially sacrifice one of his own Zoark. Gonna just send up this Execute. You know, send up yeah. the, the sacrificial egg, as you may call yeah, it. And he needed too many pieces. Oh, the sacrificial egg, that, that feels <laughs> like a punny opportunity. <laughs> I like it a lot. We're going to see Alex use that propagation trade one time. Does have a field blower in his hand. Could definitely get rid of that floatstone and choice band on Azul's side of the field. Choice band, you know, it would force Azul to find one more piece to get the knockout, potentially. You see double propagate here. Might see an ultra ball. And looks like we'll, we'll have to see what he gets here with this. Maybe just wanting to thin a couple cards out. Going to maybe just get a Zorg GX and put it in his hand. And that looks like that's what he grabbed. 
My, uh, my oldest son just walked over for everybody who's watching this game uh, because they know me, which means no one, because my wife is definitely not watching this. Uh, uh, my, my oldest son won and my youngest son lost. <laughs> and you know, uh, uh, my oldest son is playing Zoro Eggs. And what's interesting is he playtested it a whole bunch with Azul on Wednesday, and Azul pounded him with tons of decks. Uh, uh, my son couldn't take around because Azul's very good at Pokemon. <laughs> uh, so, so he woke up yesterday morning and said, we're switching to Night March. And he logs on to PTCGO to just play random games and try it out. And he ended up playing Alex Wilson. And Alex was playing <laughs> this list. And Alex proceeded to pound him with this <laughs> list. And then he was like, we're back on Zoro X. Yo, let's go. Oh, gosh. So, so I, feel, I feel deeply connected to watching these two guys uh, uh, play this uh, mirror match. Yeah, absolutely. It gives me the feels, yo. <laughs> So, uh, actually a really solid turn here on Alex's side. Gonna go ahead and Guzma bring up that Tapu Lele GX. Already has 50 damage on it from earlier in the game. Ride is beating, will be able to knock out this Tapu Lele. Alex will go down to two prize cards and, uh, you know, put himself in a solid position here to potentially close out this game. Gonna maybe check here to see if Azul has already played his Field Blower. I believe he has played one, but as we see on a, Azul's list here in front of us, he actually does play two copies of the card. Right. So he could get rid of that second... F uh, Choice bands and maybe Alex is not expecting that uh, second second field blower. But. So so if you're Azul, what's your strategy to come back here? Well, it's definitely yeah, I recognize he's in a bad situation. Yeah, right? he's he's not in a good spot for sure. He's, he's gonna, like a hex and eggs away from losing, right? Yeah, he's de he's gonna need some powerful sort of turn with like maybe an in, maybe a red card, something like that, and then uh, you know getting the full bench. Well, no, he really he needs to hex maniac and red card probably this turn. Yeah, like I game. feel like he has to hex and fill his bench this yeah. turn and take a knockout. Or he's just not going to be able to uh, to get there. He's got some of the pieces in his hand. We see the sky fields. I think that's might be what he was missing his last turn. Yeah, we see DCE, we see Hex Maniac, but does he have a choice band? I don't see it in his hand yet. He's got some of the pieces, but not all of them. What's he looking for? Going to maybe get that Mewtwo Evolutions, it looks like. Not something Alex can knock out immediately, actually. It does have 130 HP. He's only hitting 100, and, uh, or 100 damage right now, so... Would need um, Hex Skyfield and another Pokemon, but you know, Azul knows by doing this, he's actually he's not gonna lose the game this coming turn because Alex can't Guzma a two prize Pokemon and Hex Maniac to fill his bench in the same turn, right. um, and Alex can't use that Counter Catcher we know he plays because he's ahead on prizes right now. So uh, looks like an N is gonna be Azul's choice here. Gonna limit Alex's hand size. Also gonna put himself down to just four, and I'd probably just see a Psychic here with the Mewtwo actually this turn. Right. Maybe just doing a little bit of damage to this Mewtwo and then also, uh, you know, able to retreat the Mewtwo on the next turn with that DCE. So each player is going to shuffle and draw the number of cards equal to the number of prize cards they have remaining. We'll see on Azul's side. Does he get any other pieces he wants to use? How, how, does, how does the chip damage from the Mewtwo set up his numbers here? Is there, any, is there anything special about that? I mean, I recognize that Zorik's got Psychic Resistance, so it can it's be, just going to be a chip. He's only going to do 40 damage here, but what he can do is he'll potentially be able to... Um, we see him actually going to use Propagate here before to prevent, like, a Hex Maniac or something. Oh, no, actually has an Ultra Ball, sorry. Um, so it's actually going to mean that he needs two less benched Pokemon next turn. So he needs less pieces in order to get the knockout on this Zoark with his own Zoark. So right. I think that's kind of what he's setting up here. You know, this right. is definitely... Just trying to make sure that it, he plays a Pokemon that can't get knocked out so he's got more Pokemon in yeah. general. This is a far from ideal situation for Azul. Yeah. Um, you know, he missed the knockout, a previ or missed the attack on a previous turn, which was ended up being pretty big here, I think. And is forced to kind of go for this play. Even though it's not ideal, it's kind of like his only option in the scenario that he's in. Um, we'll see if he uses that propagation. Looks like he will just put those in his hand. Maybe trying to play around that Hex Maniac once again. We're going to just see the Psychic here does 40 damage. Alex on his side does have a Skyfield. We see a Bridget. Can start using Trade. Right, let's talk with the judge about something. He's asking the judge something. Maybe asking if he can use that Bridget even though Sudowoodo's in play. The answer, I believe, is you cannot. Right. right. Yeah. If you don't have a bench spot, you can't play yeah. it down, right? So uh, it looks like he may just trade it away. Looks like maybe a little yeah, bit of a discussion coming a on. More. Yep. So we're going to see a trade, yeah. number one. 
There's that counter catcher, unfortunately unable to use it at this point. Yeah, I, it's hard to imagine he gets in a situation where he could use it anywhere the rest yeah. of this game. I wouldn't be surprised if he just traded it away. Yeah, at I this assume point. you just want to thin your deck out now. See what he chooses to do, though. He wants to find, you know, if he can find a Hex Maniac and, you know, two more Pokemon in a Sky Field, he can get the KO on this Mewtwo, put himself at just one prize. You know, he, then he only has one prize remaining, only has to knock out, like, an Execute to win the game, which would, you know, theoretically should be able to wrap up the game for him, assuming he hasn't discarded too many VS Seekers. He still has access to Guzmas. Um, so we'll see right. what he's able to do, though. Yeah, so how do you feel about the three executes versus four executes? I feel like the trend was to play four executes. I recognize both of these guys are playing three today. Yeah, I think, you know, four is great, but you need to find space in your deck somewhere, right? Like, sometimes you just have to make cuts, and I think both of these players saying, I'm going to make the cut at, uh, I'm going to, oh, actually going to bring up the Sudowoodo here, and I actually like this play here yeah, from Alex. Yeah, he's just going to take a prize, yeah. right? But, uh, Put him in a situation where if you bench eggs, I'll Guzman win. Yeah. And Azul does already have the one egg on his bench. He's just going to need to take one more knockout. One more VS Seeker for Guzma would get Alex the game on the next turn. Yeah. But back to the eggs. I think that, you know, you have to make space in your deck somewhere. And I think playing three is just fine. Uh, you know, if you have three plus one more basic Pokemon in your hand, you can get the play of Hex Maniac plus bench four Pokemon uh, with the Skyfield in play to hit 210. And so I think that's what you need. So, Battle Compressor going to come out. We heard time was just called in the hall, but these players do still have 14 minutes left, as we see on the screen. Uh, you know, the stream is usually a little separated from the, the, the field of players, just, you know, for time reasons. It takes a little longer to get the stream uh, set up sometimes. I'm sure we're going to be just doing it super crisply the rest of yeah, the day. Today. Just bam, bam, bam. Ra round one can be a little hard to, you know, get things going, but now that we've gotten into a groove of things, I think we'll be able to get some matches to you guys pretty quickly. Azul's just thinning his deck here with this Battle Compressor. I'm really not sure at this point what Azul is going to want to go for. You know, he knows that Guzma's in Alex's discard pile. He could maybe go for, like, a Getsis or something like that to get rid of VS Seeker potentials to try to avoid losing on just the next turn to a Guzma. But I mean, he still has two trades available to him at that point, right? He's yeah. probably not going to be able to get a knockout here. This is just not a good situation for Azul Garcia Griego. He's, he's way behind. He uh, could potentially get the KO here. Which I think is what he's going to have to go for and just hope that Alex doesn't have the VS Seeker in his hand. Which it's not a guarantee. You know, Alex actually does only play the three copies of VS Seeker. We see him playing the, the one less count than sort of what we yeah, see. Yeah, talk about making cuts for things you really want to put in the deck. Yeah, going absolutely. from four Seekers to three Seekers is a, a, a tough decision, I think, for, for anybody playing expanded format. Yeah, and Alex, you know, just valuing that cut over, you know, getting some of his tech options in play. Wants to play the Hypnotoxic Laser. Wants to play the Enhanced Hammer and the Counter Catchers. And, but, you know, we've seen the Enhanced Hammer have some, some value here in this match. Um, so it's definitely, you know, seems like it's paid off thus far, but this game is certainly not over. It's definitely a rough spot for Azul, but the game, uh, you know, is not over. We can still see Azul come back from this. It'll just kind of depend here on this point what Alex has in his hand. So it looks like double puzzle here, eyeing up Choice Band, and it looks like Pseudo Wudo as well. Wants to, you know, get that in play, get that roadblock right. ability back right. out. Make sure he can't just grab a zillion eggs next turn and uh, shoot for the moon. Yep. Without having to work a little bit, right? So we'll see uh, Pseudo Wudo hit the bench, it looks like. Hex Maniac as well, going to turn off that roadblock ability. Oh, and uh, just and a passes. Psychic here? Or maybe psychic. just a pass. No, he's Psychics. Okay, yeah, going to Psychic for 40. Man, that, that is almost certainly going to just seal this game up, I think. Azul whiffing there. There's the bench Pokemon. Oh, no, Alex needs the Skyfields. He doesn't have the Skyfield in play. Yeah, Azul, it, yeah, and there it is. He has it in his hand, just didn't bench it, and, or didn't put it in play. And <laughs> there you go. Alex is going to be able to take that game. And, uh, you know, and unfortunately,